singing this song together. Angels we have heard on high. Join me on the first verse now. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. and we'll sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hymn number 93. And we'll sing the first and last verse of this song, hymn number 93. Join with me now. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Father, we're thankful that we can sing these songs. Lord, we're thankful that we can be here today to worship together in your house. 
Lord, let this day be a day of encouragement, a day of enlightenment. Lord, let it be a day of, of even rebuke, if that's needed. And what you would have for us today, Lord, just guide and direct this day, we ask it in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to take a moment to welcome you. If you're a first-time visitor, please take a moment to fill out the little card in front of you in the pew. Drop it in the offering plate a little bit later as it's passed. And also, we'd like to meet with you back to my left, your right, in the narthex area back here. There's a room that says Welcome Center on it. We'd love to meet with you and uh, get to know who you are. We'd love you to do that, if you could do that. Please do that. Those of you that come every Sunday, we're glad you're here. Your pew was waiting for you all week. It was glad you're here, okay? So we're glad you're here. Dave Huff is going to come and sing for us, Oh Holy Night. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he returned and the soul felt his worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. All on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, Slave is our brother, sweet hymns and oppression will lead. Sweet hymns of joy, the precious child adore you in glorious praise and raise his holy name. Praise appreciate you being with us today. Thank the Lord as we gather our thoughts this time of year, truly what Christmas is about. Our children's choir is going to sing for us in just a moment. As they're getting uh, ready, I'm going to ask our ushers to prepare for the offering this morning. Just want to remind you, don't forget, this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock will be our uh, Christmas Eve service. So we want you to do whatever you can to make plans to be here that's Wednesday, this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, we're thankful for this time we have together on this day that we celebrate your birth. But Father, continue to remind us why that you sent your Son. 
and that was to live a life without sin and to die on a cross for all our sins, Lord, so that we could have eternal life in heaven. I thank you for our Lord and Savior's birth, his death, and his resurrection, Father. Lord, take this offering and use it to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to walk over here while they're see Mary and Joseph and the shepherds here. Isn't this something? Isn't this something what they did there today? Good, you guys did a good job. What's Mary? Mary? Are you? What's your name? Veronica. Veronica is Mary Day. Where's Joseph? Is Joseph here? Joseph, what's your name? Justin. Justin. Very good. Good job. You guys did this up in Sunday school today, didn't you? Today, so good. Isn't it great to know the story and the real meaning of? Oh, he says I should ask everybody to tell their names. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. Okay, what's your name, Shepherd? Jimmy. What was that again? Say it louder. Jimmy. Okay, and this this is an angel. Jessica. Vincent. Nathan. Josh. Brittany. Alex. Okay, hang on. I'm coming over there. Okay, just a minute. And here's an angel. Sarah. Mark. Kelly. Get over here. Okay, here we go. Brittany. Marissa. All right. Good job, guys. This is very good. I'll tell you what. I know there's a lot of other little kids out there that didn't get to sing away in a manger. Why don't you all come up? Let's let all the little kids come up and sing away in a manger. Wouldn't that be neat? If you're under the age of, let's say, seven, eight years old, why don't you come up, okay? Come on up, kids. We'll give you time to get here. Right up these sides right here. Come on up, right up here. You can come right up here. Now, if some of you are sitting out there saying, oh, no, this is taking time. I'm not going to get to the chicken house on time. It's just too bad, okay? You get leftovers. Come on up. Is that all the little kids we got out here today? And then no more kids? Come on. Up in the balcony. They're coming down from the balcony. Come on. Yeah, come on. We got some more coming.
Anne was pointing out her granddaughter there, so you know. So show pictures here in just a minute if we don't hurry up and have them sing. Kids, come on over here. Come over here in the front. Come right on over here in a little bit. Get on over here so you can be seen. Come on. Come on over. Come on over. Step, make room and put them right there in the back. You tall ones go right in the back there, okay? Good. Let's sing, kids. Away in a manger. Ready? Here we go. good. We're going to let you come down. They did a great job. You guys can go now. Well, because you were touching it. That's why it wasn't on. You kept tapping on it. <laughs> you guys can go now. Don't forget to take the baby with you. Okay. You might cry during the service. All right, well, it's your turn to sing again. Take your hymn book, if you would, and we'll turn to hymn number, and I'll tell you what that is, hymn number 90, and we'll sing it, Came Upon a Midnight Clear. I'll let you be seated while the kids come. You can sit down. I ah, see, here we go. You can sit down, and we'll sing this song together so the parents can see their kids. It came upon a midnight clear. Join with me. It came upon the infant holy infant lowly if you wondered why I stopped singing I realized the words in my music didn't match what you were singing so I changed and I stopped I think you know this song you've heard the tune I know you have a song that doesn't get sung that much at Christmas time here at church and we'll join together as we sing infant holy infant lowly for his bed a cattle store and knowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swift are swinging, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Christ the babe We're sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Us rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow. 
Christ the babe was born for you. Christ the babe was born for you. Then we'll sing a song you know. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. Must I walk this path alone? 
song says, breath of heaven, when God sent his son to earth. A great mystery is there that God would send his son, yet his son said he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. The sender was also the sent. Sometimes we just can't fathom the miracle. Just can't fathom exactly what really did happen. But once you know, and once you've trusted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, Christmas can never be the same. You can see all the pretty lights and you can see all the pretty things out there. And you can have the best gifts. But the greatest gift of all is when the sender became the scent that we might have everlasting life. The star that marked the baby's birth was spoken by his voice. The wisdom of the kings who came was given by this boy. He wrote the song, the angel saying that it go through the land this child the girl held in her arms held the whole world in his
down on my knees lifetimes of boxes timeless to me letters and photographs yellowed with years some bringing laughter some bringing tears time never changes the memories the faces of loved ones who bring to me all that I come from and all that I live for and all that I'm going to be my precious family is more men and shepherds down on their knees bringing their treasures to lay at his feet who was this wonder baby yet king living and dying he gave life to me time never changes the memory the moment his love first pierced through me telling all that i come from and all Jesus is more than an heirloom to me. like you to turn in your Bibles today to Isaiah chapter 9. Two of the scriptures I'll be using this morning are also on the bulletin if you don't have your Bibles with you today. Well, someone didn't quite get to sing enough today, did they? All right. <laughs> you know, I was reading a couple things on uh, <clears throat> what does Christmas mean to certain children, and thought this was thought you'd like this. What does Christmas? What does a Christmas carol, "Silent Night," mean? And um, Gail, who's age nine, said it's supposed to be a quiet night. Because back there in the Holy Land, Jesus needed his sleep to get ready to do all those miracles. So, I thought that was pretty good. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 today on God's gift. God's gift of peace. 
Would you stand with me this morning as I read God's word? And Isaiah, the prophet, as he's writing the words in which God inspired him to write, in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let's pray. Father, as we learn about your gift of peace today, I know there are hearts here that are troubled. I know there are hearts that need encouraged. Father, let them know that you are the Prince of Peace. You are the source of peace. You are the God that they need today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, the first thing that we need to understand that you're God's child when it comes to understanding that he's going to give you the peace that you need. I'd like to share with you a true story about Terry Bowden, coach for Auburn. In December 1993, the Bear Bryant Coach of the Year Award was presented to young Terry Bowden, the first-year coach at Auburn University. Terry had taken a struggling program as on probation and led his team to an undefeated season. Interestingly enough, Terry's father, Bobby Bowden, who's a coach at Florida State, also was nominated the same year for the same award. There was a lot of good natured joking and teasing at the banquet about both father and son being considered for this prestigious award. Of course, when Terry won, nobody in the room was happier and prouder than his father. In his acceptance speech, Terry thanked his team, his fellow coaches, Auburn University, and then his family. I owe so much to my parents, he said. Many of you in this room know my mother, and you know how special she is, but let me tell you about my father. My parents always took us five kids to church, all five of us. Even when we were on a trip, they took us to church. Once while we were on vacation, we went to church that was a little more emotional than we were used to. The minister was shouting and pounding the pulpit. He began to look around at the congregation for someone to single out, and he spotted my father. Mom and Dad had marched us down to sit all the way down on the front pew. Mom was on one end of the five kids. Dad was on the other end, and we were all just squeezed in between. The preacher pointed dramatically to my dad And this conversation took place. You there, do you have faith? Yes, I have faith, he answered. The preacher said, if I put a two-by-four down across the floor, do you have enough faith to walk across it? We said, yes, I could do that. But said the preacher, what if I took the same two-by-four and placed it across the top of the two tallest buildings in New York City? Would you have enough faith to walk across it then? No, I don't have that much faith, his dad answered. But what if someone were standing on the other end, said the preacher, and was dangling one of your children off the side? Would you cross the board then? Terry said that his father turned and looked down the pew at his five kids and asked, which one? (laughs) Now, he went on to say and talk about his dad, and even though his dad was just kidding, just, just a great relationship that they have as a father and son. But you know what? I thought that that fits so much at the beginning for you to understand today, that you know is any one of you here today were dangling at that other end of that board, someone holding you, God wouldn't give it a second thought to take care of you, to take hold of you. Not a second thought, just as even though he was kidding about all five of his children, he was just doing that, kidding. He wouldn't have given it a second thought to go across that board for any one of his children. 
For us to understand it, to receive God's gift of peace, the Prince of Peace, we must understand that we're, we're his child. He loves us. No matter what you're going through, he wants to take care of you. Understand that he's there. And he loves you. I want you to look at the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2 and verse 10 and 11. Luke chapter 2 and verse 10 and 11. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, As the shepherds were watching over their flock, we know the angels came to them at night. And the angels said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Any time that there is an encounter in the Bible with a spiritual being and a human knows that, they're immediately frightened. Immediately. But what we need to understand here, God's peace is founded on good news, not fear. Notice what the angel said there. What does he say right at the beginning? Right at the very beginning. And the angel said to them what? Fear not. When God brings us his gift of peace, no matter what we're going to, what he wants us to know is don't fear. Don't fear what you're facing. Right away, right at the beginning, before he says anything else, he says, fear not. Why is that? Because God's peace is founded on good news, not fear. What the angels say, for I bring you good tidings. The good news, that's what the gospel means. The gospel means good news. The good news is today, no matter what you're facing, you can have peace because the good news is you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, and that means he's in control of your life. That means he wants to be. That means no matter what happens to you, you know that you're going to heaven. That's the good news. That's the peace that you can attain no matter what news that you hear this week. You have good news. See, God's peace, God's gift of peace is founded. It's based. It's built upon the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news. It's not that just... A baby was born. It's not just the Christ child was born, but he was born for a purpose. The good news is he was born to be our Savior. That's the principle in which we stand upon today, that we can look to, that the gift that we attain called peace comes first of all by understanding don't fear what you're going through. God loves you, and he's going to be with you. And the good news is he's your savior and you're going to heaven. Secondly today, God's peace is founded upon a relationship. When we attain peace in a greater way in our life, you know when that's done? The way that that's done and when that is done is when you study this book more. It's when you decide to spend more time with your Lord. It's when you decide to say that I'm going to commit more time to even being here. God's peace is based on your relationship. You know, one time there was a um, quite a large gathering of people in Ohio decided that they would throw a, a birthday party for a good friend of theirs. They sent out all the invitations. They did everything. They even rented a hall. Everybody bought all the presents, the gag gifts, the food. They catered all the food in and everything. There was only one problem. They, they got there that night, 
And they all looked around and they realized that they had forgot to invite the person whose birthday it was. True story. Well, you know what they did? They kind of looked around, said, well, let's just eat the food and open the gifts and we'll just have a lot of fun anyways. God's peace is based on a relationship. Now let's think about it for a minute. Let's think about what happens right now this time of year at Christmas. I was watching somebody as I was uh, walking along a sidewalk and looking in a store. And as they were looking at a gift, and you know when people are looking for a gift for someone, they were looking at a camera for somebody. And I, the way I could just look at them and see that there wasn't one even inkling of a thought of what this time of year was about. They were focused on getting that gift for that person. They wanted to get that camera. And to think what we do. We throw a big birthday party. We have a lot of food. We open a lot of gifts. But the person is not even thought of whose birthday it is. That's what we do. That's what the United States of America does. The majority of people in this country when it comes to Christmas. We celebrate Christmas, but our schools can't even call it Christmas break anymore. It's the holiday break. They can't sing Christmas carols at school. They can't read the story of what it's about. When is that ever done for anything else? Never. Why do something when the person is not invited? Think about it. If you want real peace today, the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, God will give you perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. i got to think about him. We've got to think about our Lord. The peace that you want today, maybe you're struggling with and you don't have it, is because your thoughts are on your circumstances. They're on your situation. They're on your future. But God says, I want a relationship with you. I'm going to give you the peace that you need. If you take your thoughts and you put them on me, that's my gift to you. As the more I become a part of your life, the more you focus your life to me, you're going to have the peace that you need. And thirdly today, God's peace is not only founded on a relationship, but it's founded on a trust in that relationship. I want us to look at Philippians chapter 4, our last scripture today. Philippians chapter 4 and verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7. God's peace is founded on good news and not fear. God's peace is founded on a relationship. And God's peace finally is founded on trust. Do you know it compounds that relationship? You know, the the more that you trust somebody, why is that? It's because the closer relationship you have with them. The more that you trust, the stronger the relationship the greater the trust. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7. Be careful nothing. In other words, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now listen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. In other words, it goes, it transcends beyond any human intellect. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Whatever you're anxious about, go to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts 
and minds through Christ Jesus. See how important that relationship is? See, God's gift of peace, when it's based on good news of the gospel and your relationship with Jesus Christ, then the trust factor comes in. The trust factor comes in. And I'm asking you a question today. Will you trust God enough, just enough, to let him hold you? That's all he wants to do. During World War II, the years in which it took place was another Christmas Eve. And there were some soldiers that were fighting on the front lines. Their commander said, you've been up here enough. It's time for you to go back. I want you to go back to such and such city. I want you to rest. You need it. So several of the soldiers were walking back as they were walking back to the city which was a safe haven. They began to talk with each other and they realized, they said, Joe, and they were talking back and forth, you know that, you know, it's Christmas Eve. He said, you're right. He said, it is Christmas Eve. They began to talk back and forth and maybe they were going to get each other something, so on and so forth. And as they were walking towards the outskirts of the town, they passed by an orphanage. They walked by, they saw it, they saw the children, they began to walk further. It was getting dark, the stores were closing. Joe had an idea, and he told one of his buddies, hey, 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 he says, let, let, let's don't get each other anything. Let's go over there, and let's just get a bunch of toys, and everything we get for, anything imagine we can get for those kids. We'll buy it tonight, and tomorrow morning we'll go out to the orphanage. We'll give them all this stuff. They all looked at each other and said, hey, you know what? That's a great idea. They went in the store, got everything that they could get, fell asleep that night, woke up the next morning, and they walked out to where the orphanage was. As they walked in, those kids' eyes lit up, seeing those big old burly soldiers walk in, bags full of toys and gifts and clothes. They began to distribute them out, and the kids were just having a heyday. And of course, the lady who was running the orphanage couldn't help but be so thankful. And she was standing back. She was looking at the soldiers. And one of the soldiers spotted a a little girl over in the the corner, and she was crying. And he went over to the lady who ran the orphanage. He says, hey, he says, "Uh, you know, we're here doing all this. He says, why is she crying? He says, well, her mom and dad just last week were killed in a car accident, there was no place to take her, so we brought her in. He walked over over to the little girl, and he said, uh, he said, honey, I've got all these things. He says, it's Christmas time. He says, what do you want for Christmas? And she looked up at him, and she said, with tears coming down her face, she said, I just want somebody to hold me. I just want somebody to hold me. You know, I want to ask you a question today as I close again. I don't know what you're going through, but will you trust God enough today to just let him hold you? And if you will, that piece of the good news, that piece of that gospel, of that relationship, of that trust will come through to your life in a way today that you've never understood. Just trust him. Let's bow our heads today for prayer. As our heads are bowed today and our eyes are closed, and those of you that are Christians are praying, let me speak to you first of all. I want you to be praying right now maybe that you have brought someone with you as a friend today. And they've realized that they're searching for that peace. That peace that can only come from heaven. If you're here today 
and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the good news is that Jesus was born. Jesus was born to die on a cross, to give you eternal life in heaven, to give you, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, his gift is here today. He's here waiting. We're going to give an invitation song, and that is just that, an invitation. We're going to ask you to just step out and come kneel at this altar and pray and accept God's gift of forgiveness. He died on the cross so you could have eternal life. Will you come today and we sing in just a minute and accept Christ as your Savior? Father, if there's one here today that you've been speaking to and they don't have that peace and they need that good news, Father, you've been speaking them today. May they come forward. May they step out by faith and trust you and know that you're here to hold them and to take them into heaven. Father, whatever it may be from this day forward, Lord, if they accept you, that can have that peace. Lord, may they come forward and accept you as our personal Savior today, Lord, as we give this imitation song in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me today as we sing? Just as I